is a UGRC 150, a critical thinking and practical resident class for group six, S2023, first semester. I've had to set you up immediately uh, with the presentation proper, just to establish that you can hear me. I, I presume you can, but if you can, then a few of you can raise your hands to indicate that you can hear me, because I have set up a recording. I want to do the presentation of the content quickly, and then it will give us time to now take queries if you have any. Very good. So I see Evelyn's hand up, Chrissy's hand is up. Only two people. Can we have more? Just to know that you can hear me. And then I will do the presentation on the unit five, which is in your lecture four. That content is actually resource to on Sakai. Very good. Quite a number of hands now. Well done. It means I'm very audible, so I'll focus on delivering the content. What I'm saying is, at your resource tool on Sakai, you will see lecture four, engaging unit five. Why? Because the unit four in your textbook is not an examinable content. So we have done unit one as lecture one. We do unit two as lecture two, substantively. Eh? Unit three as lecture three and so unit five as lecture four, and that is very helpful. We will open your assignment for assignment two in due course before this week five ends as scheduled, okay? And so we will respond to that and then you'll be preparing for your interim assessment, which will be on units one, two, three, five, six, and seven. Okay, you have 30 questions to answer from those units. Now back to you two. Our content for the day, and I'll share quickly. Unit five. Unit five is not uh, substantively heavy, you know. It is not a heavy unit, and it is simply because most of the things there have already been discussed in subsequent units. You have already seen facts versus values, factual statement versus value judgment. You've already seen implicit and explicit meanings of terms. You've already seen uh, laws, the various connotations of the word law when I engaged you on equivocation earlier with the unit two. Okay, so almost everything there for the, the groups I teach, group one, three, and six, I'm very confident that we could even have done without an engagement of the unit, but we still have to touch on them. I'm using the slides that I have shared as a resource to, to all students of all groups this semester. Okay, that is from one colleague of ours. And so you'll be at this even easier. Uh, the overview would, if you have engaged the slides at, at, at the resource too, and that is how we want you to study. I'm sure I gave you that prompt sometime earlier that you have matured, you have grown up now. This is week five of an 11 week semester. This is half the semester really, okay? So by this time, you are well versed in how to manage yourself online. You are organizing your, TA, your learning schedules. You know when to go to class and where to set to do what, you know how to find the library. All those ones have been done. You can't be, you know, loitering around. I'm speaking figuratively now. It will not help you, okay? So let's have a very good posture so you will do well. I don't only really like teaching, I like to mentor people, especially lower levels. Okay, so take those advices that I just faced my lecture with, you will do fine. Now, the session overview, which you would have seen already, tries to show you how it is that sometimes we are a good in our application of the word law. We, we will be criticizing someone on moral grounds, and yet the justification we may be offering will be a civil matter. Will be appealing to civil law or sometimes statutory law, the laws of the state statute. Eh? Sometimes it is a legal issue, but you are applying morality, which is another kind of a law to judges. Okay? We don't want you to be fooled. Look on my screen, I project as I speak, please. My special students, I know you are doing fine. So avoid being fooled by switching connotations without indication. Remember, that is equivocation. You have to have a fair understanding of the word law. Okay. Now, this the third slide which I've projected also 
reviews. Review means you have viewed it before, you are reviewing, you are re-looking, means you've looked at it before. So it is a re-look at factual statements versus value judgment. I want someone to read that. So all hands may go down now so that I can, very good, so that I can call someone to read. And I'll know that the person intends to read. I'll allow their microphone and then they can read. If your hand is up, then it means you would want to read. I want a very good reader. This is very cooperative of the class. I can see people dropping their hands. If Prissy is able to read, then I allow your mic, Prissy. You can unmute your microphone now and read for me, Prissy. Prissy, your mic is allowed, so you can read. Um, is, um, the place is quite noisy. Yep. I'm sorry, you, you said what? I said the when place is quite noisy. Oh, okay, that's fine. That's true. But you yeah. can hear, I hope you can hear. Okay, Abigail, did you? Yes. can I allow your mic then? Wait. Abigail, go ahead. So, fact statement versus value judgment. Factual statements are expressions that describe the way the world is. What this means is that if a report of the way the world is as we experience in action, we call them empirical. They are expressions derived from observation and they are very powerful. Value Read, judgment. Yeah. Oh, we are losing you at portions. People, people depend on hearing you. If if um, their screen is so tiny or or stuff like that. Okay, so let me get. Thank you, my dear. Let me get Asempa Eric. Asempa Eric, I just allowed your mic. Check and see if you are able to read out clearly. Abi, Abi, thank you so much. Asempa, go ahead. Factual statements. Very good. Factual statements are expected. The word is. That is. It, that, uh, what this means is that they give reports on. Uh, they give reports of the way the world has experienced them in our sense. We call them empirical because they are. They are experience of observations and are very powerful. Very good. How about value judgment, quickly? Value judgment, on the other hand, evaluate the way the world of or someone should or or okay. call them normative because mm -hmm. standards from that by with an action of law or something. Okay, thank you very much. So I'll just touch on it. I, I hope that you are not experiencing the breakages that I am um, experiencing. I don't know if it's from me. When I say it's from you, if it's my reception that is not too good. But if you can hear me clearly, then we are good to go. So what you see on your screen that your friends have read out for you nicely, Abigail and uh, Asempa have done, is just a review of what you knew already. And I'm glad I, I, I engage you in the unit one because I, I go to this extent to explain the fact that factual statements describe. I didn't only introduce you to it in unit one, I gave you the thrust of the matter in unit one. I told you that if you are dealing with a factual statement, it means that you have, you are dealing with a statement that describe objectively the way the world is, not the way the world should be, but the way the world is out there, okay? And so if you check and what I'm saying in that statement conforms or agrees with how the world is out there, then you say it is factually true. But if it doesn't, then you say it's factually false. Either way, it is not my prescription of it, no. It is a description of it, a decoding decode, describe. Mm -hmm. Whereas if it is a value judgment, it is a pre 
description, my view of it. So remember when we engaged verbal dispute versus substantive disagreement last week, I almost overemphasized the fact that if we are engaged in a substantive disagreement, oftentimes it borders on the way I view it. Even if it is a factual issue, it is the way I view the facts, the kind of facts available to me. Okay, so that's why it's about substance and not what just meanings or better still, just ordinary information I need about the facts. It could be factual, like we said last week, and only because I have different facts and you have different facts. Then it's a substantive disagreement bordering on facts, yes, but that can still be resolved. Now roll back and see the impact that this distinction between factuals and value judgments consistently make. There is a certain understanding that you must have because it will trail. I told you from lecture one that this distinction between a factual statement and a value judgment will affect how you think of open text shared and well-defined terms, which we did in unit two, remember. It will affect your understanding of verbal dispute and substantive disagreement. It will still eat into the empirical versus the normative, which we are going to do today, and still go to deduction versus induction, unit six. Can you imagine? Yes, they are the building blocks. Okay, so back to what you, you, you did with me in unit one. We are now in unit five, but you see it is still applicable here. We said, when we observe the world, five senses, that's another way of saying, when we experience the world, experience here is, is philosophical, we are speaking philosophy. The five senses, what you see, you hear, you touch, you taste or smell. If you use that means to acquire information, that is another way of saying, when you verify, we'll see verifiability, confirmability in unit seven again. And there we will show you the intricacies of that word. One is dealing with directly testable expressions, while the other one is dealing with indirectly testable. So when we get there, we'll open it a bit more. But for now, it suffices to use the word verifiable, observation-based, experiential. All those are describing empirical. Remember, we saw logical truths versus empirical truths. Yet again, in my introduction unit, you know, lecture, which I shared with everybody in the group. And you had questions on for your assignment one. Listen, a empirical just means truth or falsity. That depends on observation. You have to see, you have to hear, you have to touch, taste or smell to ascertain the truth or falsity of it. You use your five senses. And oftentimes, because it is not about how I see it, take note, but it is about what the thing is out there, supposedly. It is not a subjective point of view. That's how you distinguish value judgment from factual statement, which we did earlier. So one has objective truth. That's factual statement. It's a description of how the world is objectively. Files value judgment, we said, is what? A prescription before. Pre means before you even scribe, before you write. You already have a viewpoint. Beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. Remember. Anado is taller than his opponent, uh, JDM. We said that is a factual matter. In this instance, factually false. Compared to Anado is more handsome than his opponent. That is a value judgment. It depends on who is watching. We said all that. I just want you to remember. Now, bring that understanding we had about factual versus value judgment to this discussion about how we think of what laws. We categorize laws. Law just mean, a law just means a regulation, conformity, patterns, okay? Uh, how things happen all the time, regularity. So when we have laws, the laws are supposed to look at the word regulate, regulate, control, put parameters. That's what laws are, okay? Now you can think of laws in two ways can think of the word law, when I say two ways, two main categories, groupings, normative laws and empirical laws, laws that are empirical in nature. Now you know empirical, laws that are derived from what? Our observation of what? Regular patterns. So we saw that 
whenever a, a, a woman got pregnant in the past, she delivered in nine months time. How did we know that? We saw it with Ajua. We saw it with Ama, Yaya too, and Jojo's wife. They all got pregnant, pregnant and delivered in the ninth month of their pregnancy. By these patterns you've observed, then you come to the conclusion, take note that what? All women give birth in nine months after pregnancy, okay? Now this all women give birth in nine months, is a law you have, you have prescribed, it's like a law. You are saying that every woman will give birth in nine months. Every woman must give birth in nine months time. Every woman shall give birth in nine months time. So you are speaking a regulation as if, if Auntie Adjua's daughter to get pregnant, you expect her to give birth in nine months time. But this sense of the word law, which is the empirical one, can fail people. So look on my screen, I have shifted. I want to make it very easy for you because the earlier ones we already stressed it. So here we are. This one can fail. I want to show you the part that says it's a prediction, okay? On my screen now watch empirical laws like that can fail because as for a just pregnancy it could go into the 10th month or it could come earlier the baby could come earlier could come in the seventh month or eighth month and we will, we will not say that when the baby is coming, say, ah, I did, I did. You, you will not say, no, don't let the baby come home. Otherwise, you are breaking the law of biology. We will be arrested. No. You will have to push the baby out, people. And then we will say, this is a preterm baby. Why? Because the kind of law we are dealing with, the empirical one, only was describing how we have seen the world all this while. It was only reporting what we think should be happening. But if our discovery so far apparently didn't capture all of it, it is not our fault. We are only watching how the world supposedly is to come to that conclusion. So if it turns out that Sumua is not so, not knowing it wasn't so, we go change our law. That is the nature of empirical. We will have to go and revise it and say, hey, not knowing, it's not all metals that expand when heated. You see, on your screen now, not knowing, it is not every plan. And look at the left side of your screen, examples of empirical laws, also called natural laws or scientific laws, okay? Not knowing, it's not every planet that moves around the sun in an elliptical orbit. Apparently not all of them were like that. All this while, the ones we've discovered, look at my language, the ones we have discovered, it was covered, then you opened it. But the world is big, you are still opening. The world was not created by the scientists. The world was created by an omnipotent creator, I believe. And you are only discovering what is covered. So when you discover some, and you discover, and you discover, and all the metals you discovered, had a certain feature, which is what they expanded when you heat them. You will now say, oh, I have discovered more than 800 million metals so far as scientists. Every one of them that we discovered, as soon as you apply heat to it, it starts expanding. So you see that you have good reason to believe that all metals will then expand when heated. But it is not a certain tomb. That is what we are showing. We are dealing with a law that is empirical in nature. So it is possible potentially, now I've entered into unit six. Listen to me, uh, unit seven, sorry, attentively. So you can connect the units. It makes your learning easy. You flow like <laughs> tongues coming from an anointed singer. Huh? <laughs> I've, I've disabled your mic. You can see some. I'm the only one talking. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll open it very soon. Eh? I want you to listen so that you don't struggle. Because this is connected to Unit 7. I said, not knowing is not all metals that expand when heated. It is a possibility. Why? Because you are still discovering empirical laws are not laws that you have made or a system has made, like civil law, like statutory law, where we can decide 
that this is how we want to be governed. No, empirical laws, and I'll open them a bit more further, eh, are laws that are presumably there already. Remember factual statement, how the world is. And you are only researching to discover it. That means take the pattern, you go and revise what you thought you knew. So it might turn out that in the past, we thought all birds fly. That is not true any longer. We thought all metals expand when heated. Oh, we have discovered a counter factual. Look at the right side of your screen down there. You see the word counter evidence. It means you could encounter a woman who got pregnant and her delivery is earlier than the nine months that is expected, empirically speaking. Why are you going to expect that she will deliver in nine? Oh, because the norm. Now, don't get confused with that use of the word norm. But what we have observed so far, factually speaking, is that whenever the, the metal is uh, heated, it expands. We picked tin, it was a metal. It expands the way heated. We picked copper, it was a metal. It expands the way heated. This thing I'm doing is called what you see as what? Uh, Enumerative induction unit seven. Don't you worry, you'll get there. So you saw several instances of it. Johnny Bravo, I went into a relationship with him. He broke my heart. Then I went to Atalutu. Atalutu to broke my heart. Yesterday to Zainab's brother, eh, 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 Jahil, broke my heart. So you are listing the brothers who have broken your heart. And you were all men, take note. So you conclude, therefore, all men break women's heart. You are enumerating, accounting. So based on the several instances you've had, people, listen to empirical law, how it progresses. You make a generalization and say every planet moves around the sun in an elliptical orbit. All metals do so and so and so. Look on your screen. Any physical object that goes up must come down. All green plants use the, all fish live in water. Every human being breathes oxygen. Blah, blah. These are empirical in nature. So what? So they can fail these laws. When you say they can fail, you could encounter a metal which will not expand when heated. And we have already done that. Those are the ones that people used to do the queen's earring, you know, powerful, nice rings and whatever, because it won't ex expand. Apply all the heat. It is still a machine. It is not shaking. If that is possible, then it tells you that when you are dealing with the empirical, if you're a political scientist, look on my screen, please, and you are gathering data about how people will vote, you are dealing with a social science, it's empirical in nature. Why? You gather data, you observe patterns, get to South voted this way, and Bantama did this. So I'm showing you the relevance. I've told you I don't teach in abstraction, I don't like that. It is useless. If you teach that way. after giving you concept, I relate that I connect them to actual life. A philosopher or the critical thinkers, question asking, uh, deliberations, what have you used to solve practical issues. So the course is called critical thinking and practical reasoning. Not you know so much and yet you can't solve any problem in society. So you are a political scientist on the field. Remember that you are doing empirical science, you are gathering data based on observation. Your analysis and your projections and the policies you are drawing could fail. If you don't do the analysis well, take note that you can ask a human being, how many times have you uh, had sex this week? And the persons you are asking are youth people that have clothes from church. What do you want them to tell you? Do you say sex? What animal is called sex? I've never seen that before. <laughs> human science. They are all empirical. It's a human science. It is not natural science, even natural science, which is still a, a, an empirical science. All the sciences I'm mentioning are empirical, but natural science has, if you like, less degree of uncertainty, less. Why? Because if you tell the metal to sit on the table, it will sit down, then you run all the tests. I've allowed your mics, so please keep yourself this speech as you've done, okay? So, so we can communicate nicely. Listen. The metal will sit on the table for you to check its gram and volume and what have you and do a nice diagnosis so that at least there's a certain degree of probability in your findings. 
go and ask a human being to sit down so that you, you check temperature. When you turn and you are going to bring the lab, you would get up, check a little, go here, go there. <laughs> so human sciences and our predictions are susceptible to what? A higher degree of error than even social sciences, culture, social work, student, eh? sociology, psychology, that oh, if someone is stealing, for example, he, if he's told that, and you see that his nose will be shaking. Huh, there are people, their nose will not shake. He will look at you straight in the eye. He's not shy, and yet he took it. I've had instances like that. I'm telling you, students who have messed up. That's some kululu. And the way the person comes, they say, oh, doc, sorry, when you called me, I was praying. Yeah, this is your sister, no? Later on, being and I gratin. That's a story for another day. What I'm trying to show you is that human sciences are empirical. Social sciences are empirical. Natural sciences are empirical in nature. The laws they are dealing with are empirical. Whenever prices of goods and services are increased, I, I just entered into economics. Listen, quantity demanded will decrease. Whenever you increase prices of goods and services, people will buy less. Then they qualify it and tell you, see, there is paribus. Other factors held constant. Why? Because someone will intentionally go and buy more, the one that is more expensive, to show you that he be the guy, he be nobody. So it can alter the law. <laughs> there are always possibilities of what exceptions. You will go and buy the shoe when it is very expensive and went to the party to show you this brother who is chasing the, his lady that you know be nobody. You, so the prices have gone up and generally speaking, people should have bought less. That's the pattern. That's the law. But some will buy more. Will you go and buy a teaspoon of fuel because prices went up? How will you drive the car? So there are necessary goods and that's why the economists will qualify it and say that. What am I doing with all those examples? To show you that empirical laws can fail. When you find a counterfactual back to our screen, please keep your screen active. Otherwise, it will, it will go off and you will say, look, I can't see and I have not done anything to your screen. Okay. So touch it once in a while to keep it active. Now listen. Mother, please, see, your mic is so, off. Hey. How did my mic go off? Please, can anyone hear me? You can allow yes, uh, you can yes, hear. Yes, 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 can hear you. Yes, can hear you. Yes, off. Yes. 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 Can you hear you? 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 Let us continue. I was trying to give you information that is relevant. So I move from sociology. We say, oh, any child that grows in a broken home becomes a social deviant. Maybe generally so. So everyone is trying hard. Mummies are trying to condone a lot of things. Daddies are trying to, you know, cohere with a lot of issues at home so that the home doesn't become broken to affect our children. Because it, it seems to be a general law that if parents are not living together with it. So the child will say, I'm going to mommy, and he went to Johnny Bravo. The other one will say, I'm going to daddy, and he's with Atalu to under the tree there. You know, so we don't want that because that law guides us. But people, the law is not a certainty. Empirical laws are not certainties. That doesn't mean you shouldn't use them or apply them, but you use them with the mindset that it could be false. I'm going to the hospital now, follow me. So the medical doctor could say that, look, since my 30 years or so of practice, whenever a patient comes with these sizes of fibroids, I tell you, the delivery doesn't go well. Either we bury them, God forbid, you. I want to give you vivid examples, or, or we bury the child. It means we will lose someone. And I have 400 plus instances to show you. Charlie, if you are sitting there, your heart is pumping. Then he tells you, your report shows that you have those fibroids. Now look at the conclusion I'm going to make. That is what I said. It shouldn't be. He said, therefore, this one, you can't give it. Really? Can't? No. You just have to say, 
as a, a seasoned empirical scientist, a medical doctor, that your response should be, so I think that given what I know, given the experience, your chances, take note, the probability is that this one too might be like what I know. But it is not necessarily so. So confirmation, the father has several evidences that confirm that empirical generalization. Doesn't mean I have proven it. Confirmation is not proof. You see this at the beginning of unit six, preparing you for unit seven. It starts from unit five, understanding the laws that are described as empirical versus those that are described as what? Normative. I've not touched so much on normative yet because it's straightforward when you know the empirical one. The empirical one can feel it is only a, a, a gathering of what you have observed so far in what? everyday life, how? Through observation, factually speaking. So as you observe so many of them, you draw a general conclusion. Why will we do that? When we get to unit seven, you see why that is the methodology of the scientist. It helps science to grow. When from few instances, you make a generalization, it helps for research. And I'll take you through that in unit seven. So four, five, six, hospital cases of cholera, you see that immediately the metropolis or something will say there, there is a likely, you know, outbreak of cholera. Meanwhile, maybe at the hospital, they've seen eight or so instances. And the people who live in the metropolis are maybe four million. But you don't wait for all the four million people to get cholera before you start checking. That is not a good way. You will kill people. So when we see traces, maybe two, three, three, monkeypox, you saw seven here, two here, one, you say, no, then they declare it. That's the method. Who keeps omitting that? I don't like that, too. You see what you are doing? Hey, my brother. <laughs> don't you know Valentine was yesterday? Keep it muted, I beg. All right. So that is the method. Now back to empirical. So what should you take note of? One, empirical laws are only a description of the facts as have been observed over time, okay? It is to describe these, look on your screen, please. They are also called natural laws or scientific laws. They aim to describe the regularities or uniformities in the patterns of event or features of sense we observe around us. So what, the reason why you will say all fish survive in water is because that is what you have seen. That's what observation has shown us. You pick the fish out of water, the next five minutes is dead. But even if it is the third, third minute or so, you put it back into the water, it will, <laughs> and then it's alive again. We have observed that human beings don't fly. I'm talking about the physical flying. The other one, they, some do. <laughs> some do, they are glowy, gone at night, then they are flying. Okay. We have observed that human beings don't have feathers. How do we know? So when I say all the statements I'm making are generalizations, they are like laws, law-like. Back to your screen, keep looking. I'm speaking to the screen. Okay. They are like laws. They are law-like in nature. Where is it? Okay. It's ahead. I've done all this. Okay. They are like laws. There it is, to your right. Because you are expecting that they will all behave like that. Just like in Ghana, I'm moving now to normative, so what? You're expecting that all human beings in their right frame of mind driving will stop when they see the traffic light show red. You expect, that's the expectation you have of them. So you put the traffic light there and it shows red, expecting that the driver will obey. It is not a choice. That is how things ought to be done. That is how things must be done. I'm going to the screen for normative. Okay. Where is it? Very good. The normative and the empirical. One of you should read this quickly for me. Uh, where are you people? I want to see my screen. <laughs> Help me, God help me. I hope I've not. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I'm the man, how close the class is. Oh, no, 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 I'm close. Very good. 
<laughs> Michelle, Michelle, Lisa, dear, please yeah, unmute you know, you know me. Uh -huh, thank God, because there are too many things on my uh, thing. My power is out. Me is you. My dear, read for me. Can you see my screen, please? I, I rather stop sharing it. Eh? Please, yes. Yes. Okay, then let me share. Yes, we, we do we fine. Don't worry. We'll not let anything us. Yeah, yes, yes. We'll, we'll have a very good session. Almost done now. So I show you yeah. my screen. Great. Um, I was going to show you. No problem. Let me just keep engaging. I'll find it for you. What what we are projecting? Has... I can't see your screen. No. Yes, yes, yes. No one will see it. It has stopped there, but I'll find it quickly. So let's let me talk to what I was going to see. I, I said that eh? if you say all tra anybody driving, when they see the traffic light, they are supposed to stop. You are giving a normative law. You are showing what the norm should be. The norm, how people should behave, should, how people must behave. That is what is at stake when you use laws like civil law, laws like customary law, laws like uh, Alagemi. Eh? Alagemi is, is done at uh, the Accra traditional areas. I was telling your colleagues yesterday. You, you have freedom of movement in Ghana, yes. But if it is that time of the year and our Ghana brothers and sisters are celebrating their home war, and they tell you, we are not making any noise. No noise making. And you say that, oh, Ghana has freedom of movement. You are in trouble. <laughs> because there are customary laws, laws that guide the people's custom. And they expect you to obey that. Now, that expectation is just another way of saying you should not drown during this period. It is not optional. It's man-made. That is how we have made it. I'm sure that now Madam can see what I was asking her to read. Madam, please read this for me. Ah. Can you? The on and off will be free to be Auntie, the on and off, you also so experiencing it here. That is what caused what mm. happened. I just don't want to. Mm, don't worry. It's well. Uh, <laughs> Sister, if you way. can see my screen, then kindly read what is on, on it now, okay? <laughs> the normal season, the empirical. Excellent. Read it. The distinction between factual statements and the value judgments therefore helps us to understand general claims of two kinds. Normative principles, which indicate how things must be or how they should be. Very important. Just a minute. Just a minute. So they show how things must be. Or better still, how they should be. So two plus three must be five. Must. You can't say, well, me, my two plus three is equal to uh, uh, one. My two yards of cloth plus my three yards of cloth that you have paid for is equal to one yard of cloth. They will beat you at the market. I'm telling you. You're a thief. That's what you see. In my in class, if you wrote two okay, plus three okay. equals 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 four, I'll give you wrong to show you that you must conform. People listen. It is a must. That's how it should be done. You go and take somebody's daughter, you haven't done the marriage right. Then morning panya, afternoon panya, <laughs> evening panya. So hey, everybody's <laughs> the sister gets pregnant. She's going to deliver. <laughs> hey, Brian. I'm still in the spirit. Please. I'm very much in the spirit. It's a panya. It's a panya. <laughs> yes, we are doing panya, panya, panya. You won't pay for it. If the sister dies during delivery, a certain customary law can hold you and tell you you, you will drink the water that they used to bath the girl, the dead girl. You will marry the cops. Live in the room with her. Hey. I'm not lying to you. There are customs like that. So there is, it will tell you that this is how we do things here. You go to Rome, you got to do what the Romans do. This is normative. It is not empirical law, which you will now go and change the law to accommodate the exception. No, as for the normative laws, you must obey them. So if you jump the traffic light, we will find you uh, or we'll arrest you. You go and take someone's laptop 
and go and use it that it is yours. It's called stealing and trouble. It might be statutory. Go and scratch. You remember when I did connotations with you and I showed you equivocation, I applied those. Notes. I said a lot there. That's unit two. So you can check that lecture and get more examples. Sister scratches her friend's face because they are fighting over Johnny Bravo. One scratches the ears, another scratches the pulls the hair off. When you go, it's a civil matter. Okay? You will go and buy a koto. This one go and buy a krobe. Go and sort it. But because it's not allowed, there's a certain way of regulating it. You would have to conform, normative. I'm doing all the laws now. Now, divine laws. Some places, they do sharia. You still, they'll cut off one hand, I'm told. I don't know if it's true. You still, again, they cut the other hand off. Yes. Ten Commandments is a law. Divine law for some people. Divinely revealed. That shall not steal. That shall not kill. That shall not commit adultery. Don't bear false witness. These are regulations you must obey. You must conform. If you deviate, what we call the counterfactual, you, the deviation, will be made to conform. And therefore, so more conform. But for the empirical law, remember, if the child wants to come before the nine month, they will go and change the law rather and make the child come, disobey. If a metal won't expand when heated, you can't force the metal to expand when heated. You have to go and change what you thought you have found about the world. That whenever metals are heated, they expand. You have to go and say, it wasn't true what we thought we knew. And that is how science progresses, people. So empirical studies, when we get to unit seven, you will see rather progresses when there is what? A deviation, when there's a counterfactual, a counter evidence is good news. Now you know a good part of unit seven. It's good news. So you don't protect your theories when you are doing empirical studies, sociology, psychology, political science, uh, religions, information studies. These are all social, or if you like, some are human science. Then you go into the natural sciences. Anytime you throw a ball up, it will come down. Have you thought about the, the, the thinking behind it? Do you know why? You say if you throw a ball up, it will come down. Look at how light a ball is. It can, but you lift a whole airplane up and it goes and it's not coming down. Airplane carry many balls and human beings and chairs and tables and metals, suitcases. It lifts itself up and force of gravity is not bringing it down because the scientist discovers another law that can counteract the law that he has discovered. So you are always searching and researching. And then you research and research again. Re means you do it again. So you have searched. Then you, you go and search again. And you keep saying science thrives on research. There's a reason, because it's an empirical study. There's nothing like Agbena finality. We have arrived. Because one day we may find that there is a part of the world that we haven't discovered about human beings, that if we applied X and Y, human beings perhaps could fly like birds. You didn't create the world, so you can say that one can't happen. No, then you are not doing empirical study, you are doing dogma, pseudoscience. You are pretending to be doing something that is testable when you are not. So if you got all of those now, Let's see what hasn't been captured. I've done everything, even added some more information. I think yours will be recorded. I'll pull yesterday's group also. I shared the group one with all my groups. I'll share the group, your, your, your own and then the other one too. So you can play all and have a fair idea of examples that will help. Back to our slide. So see, this is the session overview that I quickly went through. This is what Madame read to show you the distinction. Whereas one is verifiable observation based and therefore the regularities which we are calling the law can feel they are like laws but they don't really insist that when there is a deviation you must obey no not empirical that's why we say it's law like or say but that Mrano doesn't bind everybody necessarily because it could be that it is a wrong law you have discovered there we go with a, a planet that will not move around the sun in elliptical orbit. You may call it something else. We thought we had a certain number of planets. All of a sudden, it wasn't so. We thought the Earth was in the center of the universe. Then we discover something else later. It was rather the sun. Maybe tomorrow we'll come and say they are not even in the center. They are all hanging at the 
acute uh, angular. All those are possible. Why? Because we are observing to arrive at our finding. So the, how much we have discovered is how much we can speak to correctly. So you can see whenever the clouds gather here, it rains. I've entered into the meteorologist department. You see why critical thinking is topic neutral. You move from one place to the other. The, the tool is working for all of them. The meteorologist says it will rain tomorrow because the southeastern, whatever of the whatever of the this plenty of humidity of the average rainfall pattern of the this what kind of thing, 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 therefore tomorrow it will rain. Whenever it was so in the past, perhaps it rained. My dear siblings, my people. So they project, it's a, a, an informed prediction that is made when we say, therefore, we are expecting that it will rain so and so and so. Now, if tomorrow it doesn't rain, is a meteorologist going to tell the sky that you have to release the rain? What you are doing, are embarrassing me. Why? I told everybody that I told you. No, no, no. They check to see, oh, apparently, because of the uh, West Indies wind of the vicinity, this time, it class, then we have discovered something else and we are happy. If it was science we were doing, if someone tells you that they think they have a cure for HIV or they think they have a cure, a cure, I say cure for COVID, a proper scientist is receptive to it. They are happy to receive that and check and see just in case we have discovered. They are not protective of their theories to say, no, nobody should come and say we have, we have discovered a cure. Who told you that I can get a cure for this? You do, I got. You could be wrong all this while. Or you could be right only to an extent. It's a probability matter, unit seven. So we got that very well. <laughs> Excuse me. And, and therefore, we moved on to the next slide, which put content to it. One is telling you what you ought to, what must be, how things should be. That is the normative. That's why people want to think of them always as what man made, not necessarily man made. It could be divinely revealed as well, like divine laws, or it could be our prescription for ourselves. Okay, but it, it might go beyond just man made, but it just tells you how things should be done, ought to be done. Whereas the other one is describing how things are done. And so we went to revise that. And here are examples for you to see. I've said everything on this slide also, teaching not scientific laws, okay? So natural laws are also called scientific laws. They are empirical in nature. And why? Because they describe, I've said all that. Based on past experiences, you draw general conclusions, but they cannot absolutely certain because there could be counterfactual. If you don't see counter evidence and you see counterfactual, it's the same. A counter and opposite to the fact. Okay, then we move on. I told you that therefore they are like predictions in disguise. You're only predicting that based on what I know about people who get pregnant. Kojo, this woman that you have impregnated, nine months from now, your trouble will start to <laughs> I tell you who oh, are somebody. Nine months, you are going for weighing, you are going to buy diapers, you will buy a paracetamol suppository. This why? How are you able to die? Is it a prophetic revelation? No. Based on the information we have gathered, you see that word in unit seven, empirical content that you have, able to tell that from nine months from today, you can't spend all your pocket money. You didn't put your something in the zip. You are in trouble. When they give you 300 cities for your upkeep, you will have to buy weighing, weighing card and what have you. From nine months going. Why are you saying that? Because you have some information, empirical content, that will help you to do what? A prediction. So empirical laws inform our prediction. If you were driving and there's a flood somewhere, it has rained and there's a flood, and you saw the electric, electric cable, the lights are not awful, come off and fall into that water. Then a sister is getting out of her car, packed in that water, and she's pulling her leg out. You see how you shout. Hey, 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 tell the sister, tell the sister. Do you know why? Because you know something about water and electricity and how one conducts the other fast. And so the cable fell into the water at the extreme end there. But by some predictive power that you have, I said it doesn't come from the Holy Spirit, this one. It is just from your empirical content that you have. Please, those of you who have gadgets, go and sweep them up here. Because even in my home, I keep seeing it going on and on before you spoil your rice cooker. By some predictive power, you can tell that this sister, what she's going to do, if her legs touches the water and 
she should stay in the car because if her leg touches that electrocuted water, she will become obituary too. How do you do that? By the information you have. How does he get the information if it is generalized, a claim based on observation of what, whenever water, see my language, whenever, any time, every time that this, you are speaking like a law, binding everyone, so you can predict based on the content you have, okay? You can predict that whenever water and electricity come into contact, trouble don't come, whether it's dirty water, clean water, water again. So predictive power comes here. I'm saying, therefore, that empirical laws give you the power to predict. What they are saying is that why prediction? Because it could fail. So sickle cell, anemic patients will not go beyond 18 years. We had that in the past. Is it so today? Not necessarily, because we have found counter laws that, if properly involved, can keep that child to 60 something, 70 so having a normal life. And so far as you check your follicles, you're eating your ions, you are making sure that you retain a lot of your energy, take a lot of fluid, whatever. All these things I'm saying can let people go beyond the 18 that we thought we knew. In the past, HIV was a death sentence. People, when you hear HIV, it's like, hey, they did. We don't want everyone getting HIV, but it's not scary as it was then because science searches and researches. So empirical laws should be understood as what? A prediction, an informed prediction anyway. So you are not going to say prediction, so you are joking with it, but it could fail. You have said that a lot. Now we move to the others that we call normative. Normative meaning if you disobey, we will force you rather the counter evidence, the counterfactual to conform. We will not change our law for you. So if you steal, we will put you at counter back or find you. On your screen, I see civil law and statutory law and some example. You see, there are laws that are made to guide us. You jump the traffic, they will tell you that you cannot do that. One small man wearing black with some white somewhere will raise his hand and say, Massa, pack. And you can say, a barn, a barn. You have been arrested. Why? Because we are telling you, you can't have your own way around this one. You are not like, the ball that when we throw up, it will come down. Then one day, this ball that you throw, it says it won't come down. That one is force of gravity. We will now go and find out, why is it that when we threw this ball up this time, it didn't come down? We'll go and revise our law and say, oh, force of gravity works only within so and so range. In space, when you go and raise your, <laughs> you throw a ball up, maybe it won't come down. It will go, huh? then you now change your law to accommodate the deviation. But if someone is driving tra in the traffic, several law now, look on your screen, and he sees red, and he says he did, he was driving on, we will tell you, you must conform to the law. Because the law we are dealing with here is not empirical. It is what? Civil law, which falls under the normative laws. Normative means it's a prescription. Look down there. We expect you to behave that way. Examples for you. You are, you are conducting a business. You don't want to pay tax. Me, if I look at my pay slip and I see the tax, it's like three three times somebody's alive. I'm a coming nine me. I have to be pumping, but you have to be. <laughs> you have to look like oh yeah yeah. We thank God that you don't even get your money before the tax is taken before you. You get your own money. Then someone is sitting somewhere. They they, they won't pay. Commercial laws they won't pay. Constitutional statutes they won't pay. They are in trouble we will let you conform. So look at the right side down there. The sanctions attached are what makes them laws to be obeyed by citizens. So they are actual laws. Why? They require you to obey. They are not just law-like. Example for you about how chiefs should conduct themselves. These are for those who want to do law. Eh? We gave some examples that whet your appetite and then pursue them with some background knowledge. Okay, some more examples for you. There. Look at the customary law. Don't go far away. I've told you. There are laws that guide us in terms of customs. So it may not be general for everybody in Ghana. But if they tell you a uh, two force mother has passed, and so we are wearing black, we are wearing black. Hey, the, this class is being conducted. There are laws guiding our engagement. If you do, I will disable your mind. <laughs> they said they are buying grandma or they are observing, you know, whatever. So people should wear black. 
no noise making, be a bass and all the, you know, every noise you see. Then you say, you oh, after all, Ghana movement of uh, freedom of movement and freedom of worship. Go and worship and let's see. You will sleep. It's simple because there are customary laws. They might not be for the whole state. I said there are certain customs. If you don't know, I'm going to bury my in law. Eh? And the things I'm hearing, I'm shocked. The lie you do and carry things. And I said, ah, but what is all this? I just buried my dad. I didn't do all these things. Ah, well, that's customary. Then you pass here and go. So you are going to carry, carry things and do things in crime and plenty things, you know, my shanty friends, you know. Yeah, fant fanties don't do all this elaborate whatever, but they are customs. So I'm just showing you, you go and marry somebody's son or daughter, and they have customs there. It will teach you. <laughs> it will wrap you like a, a butterfly. If you got that, I don't need to overemphasize that. You see several examples. I said, they say, don't make noise. We are respecting our elders. So no drumming, no noise making. You say we are in church. You are shouting. Before you open, my Holy Spirit is there. They come to carry you away. Because you have to obey them. If you can't, then get a soundproof auditorium. No one will enter your church and come and bother you. But whatever it is that they believe that has held the land and made it the way you are, that you have come to plant your church there. You have to respect it. Go for camp meeting at another region for that period and go and Last all the tongues there. Even God that created his world can see that that is what is happening. He has not descended there and, and bent the whole place. How about you? You have to respect the customs insofar as they do not undermine human rights, etc. etc. Okay, so you don't go to someone's funeral, and my colleague did a good job on that as well. Look at the examples he gave. Just in case that people don't believe in incest. You see, well, my sister, the way he looks fine, she looks fine there. Home, this one is home cho. So your own sister. You say you will do what? Chop, chop, before you give him to someone. It's a taboo. It's against the law. You may be asked to do pacification or what have you. You can't go, girl, I'm saying, around so and so and so place. You don't go farming so and so day and what. These are all customs. I'm just showing you instances. And you are not supposed to have a choice about it. You have to obey. Look on your skin to the right side. You say, I have one white dress. When someone's mother is dead, painful death in a certain locality. For other people, white is what they wear for such a painful thing to show solidarity. So you have to understand that you are expected to conform. You don't have a choice. If you are going there, then don't go. Wearing white, when people are crying, painful death, and they believe that the sign for that is to wear red or black, when you say I'm wearing white, because me, I think that these things, they are not important, then don't go, because you will be, you are, it is normative, you are expected to participate in it. There are other examples, and look at it very well. Then we can go on to, you know that you don't stand before the tomb, even if you are his sub chief. I use that because that's what I know. The other ones that I don't know, I don't want to speak to them. Some you have to lie prostrate, I think up there, up now, when you are good. The two four sub chiefs, I'm told, have to remove their cloth off their shoulder. They don't have to wear the same cloth with him if it's an outdoor event. You can't. When you get closer, you see that it's where it's. I have to go and change yours. Mm, even the palanquins, they have to be different. The umbrellas, one must be overwhelmingly, you know, that is the custom. Don't say, I brought one from Dubai, so you are going to the gathering, then you and your, you know, area boys, you two are sitting in the palanquin, bigger than the two. It's against the custom, right? Customary laws, you got that. So we move on. And cultural norms. They are all normative. That's our heartbeat. That's what we are teaching you here. They are normative means you are expected to conform. No deviation is entertained. You can't have just like the way everybody is conforming people <laughs> and participating very well in our engagement now. That is the conforming because this is how it should be done. This is how it must be done. Moral law on your screen. You know them already. We are thinking of moral law here in the universal sense of it. I would think of it better as ethical laws than moral, because sometimes when you say moral, it has a sense of contextualization, localization. Okay, so whether a specific religion in mind or a cultural background or whatever, but you can distinguish the moral from the cultural. Look at look on your screen. Cultural norms are changed and 
appealing to what is morally acceptable. This is what we mean here. So maybe in the past we did human sacrifice, so we will get a lot of crops, our crops will yield, we'll get good rain and what have you. Maybe today we say, oh, no, no, we have better options. Apparently we we're not right with that. So there are certain standards that we appeal to, you see that, to, to refine the norms that we, 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 we subscribe to culturally. If cultural norms can give way to alternative ways of doing things, then we, it is by appealing to what? What is morally right or wrong? What is acceptable? A higher standard, supposedly. Okay. And therefore, we would say that moral laws, in this sense of the word, I want to say that because I, I, this is an area I work in, in philosophy, so I, I'm cautious with the choice of word moral. I would rather prefer ethical. Okay, ethical goes, transcends cultures, what have you. They are just abstract, you know, codes of uh, uh, morality. But morality as a word then may have a certain connotation of locality. So the morals of the Ghanaian morality, or if you like, Christian morals, may not necessarily be the same as uh, Islamic morals or what have you. Some versions of Christianity, one man, one wife, no girlfriend. One man, one wife, no second wife, trouble. But Islam can say one man may, may do four wives. So far as you can take care of them, that's what I know. Okay, and so on. So the morals, when you hear the word moral, it, it connotes a certain sense of contextualization. But you can extract it and talk of it in the universal sense of it. And that's what my colleague is doing here, saying that moral laws are not the same as cultural norms. The argument here is, we are able to revise our cultural norms, what we believe culturally to be right or true, maybe, or depending on how we think of it, we may revise it. If we can revise them, then it means we appeal to a certain higher standard than what is culturally acceptable. That's the whole point. The same with legal versus moral. Some things may be legally acceptable and yet not morally acceptable. I'm sure you can tell immediately. Apartheid was a legal thing. The law supported it. Uh, Adolf Hitler's uh, Germany then, by law, people, by the law, it was supposed to be that you have to give away every Jew for them to be killed. The law accepted that. Therefore, if you rather try to save a Jew, we're going against the law. The law said it was right to kill the Jews. Simplicity. You can look at Martin Luther's. Uh, letter from Birmingham jail. I discussed that with social and political philosophy students, level 300. So I, I think I know the text relatively well. It was the law. The law in America then, in the past, America, our own America, democracy, civil rights, human rights, pioneers, so to speak, some years back, wouldn't allow women to vote, wouldn't allow blacks to even attend the same church with the whites. It has changed. So what is legal, take note, that's where I'm heading towards, may not, may not necessarily be moral. Something may be justifiable, legally speaking, like killing in self-defense. Hey, if the person has raped everybody around me, killed them, stolen money, maybe he has even finished raping the person her herself, and he's trying to find some psychopath with sickness of a highest degree or <laughs> wants to kill the sister in addition, after all that is done. And sister finds a high heel under the chair, and then, then the back of it, bang, bang, on Natalie to say, Natalie to dead. I have killed. But perhaps legally, if it's established, CCTV camera, argumentation, what have you, established that the guy was a crazy guy that was, would have killed me like he has done every other person around me. I might go scot free, legally speaking. Manslaughter, but not premeditated murder. Then I may. I'm choosing my ways carefully because it will be engaged at the law court. But I may go scot free, legally accepted, but morally, that is the rightness of it, it is wrong. I've killed. Killing can never be universalized. So it will be wrong, people. So I'm just showing you that moral laws may not necessarily be legal. What is law? If I say that, Diana, what is accepted by the law, legally speaking, may not necessarily be the same as what is morally acceptable. So in certain states, it's okay. You can go to court with your wife, physical woman that can go to maternity leave. You understand me? That can push a baby out. 
And others too say you can have a wife that cannot push a baby out all the time, no maternity leave and all that, but it's a wife. the person is a wife. Some can go with their dogs. It is justified, but perhaps morally, <laughs> I mean, like you wake up and then your wife is Mr. Uh, Madam Cat. Cat is lying by and say, hello, Mrs. and Cat say, meow, you know, I mean, is this acceptable? Is it right? Uh -huh. Oh, they just think about it. Me, they're asking questions, I'm a philosopher. Uh, so watch room two, when I'm entering, I'm going to do, I'm at that time of the month, I want to do a quick switching. We can't tell which one is for those who have come to do the red thing and those who have come and they can't do red thing. Now everybody is uh, put in France. How can it be? Is it right? Maybe legally, it's yes, okay for some people, but think about it and ask questions. Anyway, so we roll all the way back to understanding moral law, okay? And saying that the moral has to be distinguished from culturally acceptable because what is being done culturally may not necessarily be right. Two, the moral may not necessarily be the legal. The law may justify certain things for the exigencies of the time, possibly. But it may not be right. Did you hear what Jesus said? In the beginning, it was not so. But it was the hardened heart of you people that made Moses do that. Moses brought law to regulate because the guy was in trouble. Hey, in the morning they come here in my beans. I put it here. They uh, go back, go back. Ah, so far before I did the woman baby. The man is struggling. They are traveling. Charlie, he has to put some stringent rules. Hey, if you take somebody's beans, he to take your beans. One eye for one eye. Have you heard? So if you don't want to lose your eye, you don't go take someone's eye. <laughs> that is the law. But was it right? He just said it wasn't so in the beginning. One man, one wife. But because of your heart, that is why the guy had to, you know, improvise. Appropriate, appro eh? those of you, you know, you will be doing it in level 200. Africans, appropriate, they you know, had to improvise quickly so that he can get to his purpose. So sometimes some things are legally acceptable. They may not be moral. You hear how long I've spent time here? Because it is a possible place to engage you. As critical man. Then the last one says, moral laws are presumed to be universal. Presumed, it's a presumption. That's what I said, that they are universal, they transcend cultures, they transcend religions, they transcend constitution or society. If I'm a traditional religion of a certain type, perhaps not in Ghana, but in, at other places, we could think that all these IMF issues, they're wasting time. Get nine virgins. <laughs> And go to a crossroad and cut them there and bend them there. That's where all these financial issues will stop. So perhaps hmm, some of these religions, we are wasting too much. I want to become the president. What is all these elections and jumping and campaigning? Don't worry yourself. Bring me three fresh babies. Come and pound them in the mortar here. I'm saying someone's face. <laughs> yes. Don't go for campaigning. Yes, I'm saying that. No, I don't believe in that. But that is why the, what is relig religiously acceptable for someone may not be right. And that is not a, to say that you are critiquing the, the religion because human beings constitute the religion. And whether it is Ghana or Afghanistan or wherever, we are all human beings. The blood inside us flows red. We all die when you prick something into our heart. So we can transcend cultures, religions, constitutions, states, what have you, and still speak. That level. That's Kwame Jechi's argument. Don't give me the credit. Give it to him. Emeritus Professor Kwame Jechi's argumentation beyond cultures. You can find the book and read if you are doing philosophy. If not, just read it and enlighten yourself. Okay. So what? So we can say no. And it is not because the person saying no doesn't share in your faith. So this one is a faith matter. No, it is because the religious may not necessarily be morally acceptable. And the moral here is the one that is transcendent. Cultures. So some examples for you to see. No society can make killing a value. If it did, the society wouldn't even continue existing. There won't be any human being left there to become a society to be different from others. Any society that says, oh, we, we value telling lies. How would you contract with anyone? You are going to build a house. You say, okay, I'll pay you this. Is it? When we have agreed that we will lie to each other, that's what we are. We are. We, it's desirable. It's elegant. We aspire to. So, so all these people have been married. 
Aha, who will give their daughter to someone to go and marry? When you stand there and say for better for worse, we have all agreed that we will lie to each other. So when I'm saying for better for worse, you know that I mean that I'm lying. You come to school, you learn, uh, I said, oh, you got 80. Then by the time you come, it's F. You say, ah, no, but I got 80. But you know we will lie. That's our principle. We are lying to ourselves. Ah, the society will break down. There can't be any, take note, existing and functioning society. I'm not teaching philosophy, people. That endorses indiscriminate killing. That endorses lying. When I say endorses, we understand. Not that there are no liars, though. There can be liars. But the society doesn't endorse it. Society is not making that a value, a cherished value that we, we all aspire at. No. If it is so, that society will cease existing. My point is that. And I said, don't give me the credit. It is Professor Kwame Jechi of Blessed Memory, a very emeritus professor who was with us in our philosophy department, very seasoned, covered trained African thinker. That made those very wonderful, you know, uh, presentations for us. Okay, so if you got that, these are examples on moral law. Now, what should you take for your critical thinking and for this topic? Moral laws are themselves also what? Normative. So you are supposed to obey them. Thou shall not kill. Thou shall not steal. Thou shall not commit adultery. They transcend specific cultures. And then after that, I could give you some quotes for you to reflect philosophically on. This is Martin Luther King. That's a conception of law. A just law is a man-made code that squares with the moral law or the law of God. An unjust law is a code that is out of harmony with the moral law. Unquote. You know, these are all quotations just for your reflection as you engage in different connotations of the word law. Look at how someone else quotes naturally France, how, how he thinks of law. There comes Dorothy says some quotes for reflection. These are all just for reflection. Madam, your mic is off. Madam, your mic is off. We can't. Yes, yes, it went off for a minute. I'm back. Mm -hmm. My mic is not off. Yet. My mind is not like off. Like a uh, My mic is not off. Right, right, don't worry. I think it's, it might be network. I think it's, oh, right, right. Right. it's good you can hear. But can you see the screen quickly, quickly? Yes, please. No, okay. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay, no problem. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 we can't. Uh, no, people, please. No, 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 no. The light is gone. The light is gone again. With the mama, no, no, no. If it goes, me, they are finished. <laughs> I, want <you> to listen. <laughs> uh, I want you to get everything. I want you to get everything. Yeah, yeah. I think this is it. We can't see the screen. I appreciate it. Okay. Okay, okay. Right. Just, I was, just, I was just talking about the logical okay, laws. I'm saying that it is oh, telling great, you that great, this great. is how okay. you should. Madam. Madam. Hold on, hold on. Let me wrap up. Madam. Then I'll take all the questions. Let me wrap up. Yes. Okay, I'll take every question. I said logical laws are also normative. Normative <laughs> means it also expects that this is how you should think. This is how you must reason okay so it is not optional for you. you can say me i wasn't there i wasn't in that room when the thief, the thief event occurred or when the gossip happened however when i was there i didn't participate in the gossip were you there or not you say i wasn't there then as you build on like i told you earlier however when i was there and i didn't say something that's reasoning the way you are reasoning the way you are grounding your claims we can tell you that shouldn't be. You shouldn't. We can say you shouldn't reason that way. You shouldn't. Means that it is not the right way to say it, to think, to reason. You can't say because uh, uh, he, he came from uh, so and so place. As for women, as for women, that's how they are. How many have you met? We have a problem with that way of reasoning. So we tell you 
it should not be so normative. It means there must be a proper way of reasoning, not how you are doing it. Logical laws then guide how you are reasoning and they are normative. It means you must conform. Example, if you say all A's are B's, you said it all. And then you yourself told us that, and all B's are also C's. Then what are you telling us indirectly? I've, I've disabled your mics. The sister won't permit me. I mute, then she will mute. I mute, then she will mute. So I disabled it. Now I want to hear from you. You told me all A's are B's. Then when you finish, you added an extra information which says, and all B's too are C's. Then tell me what you are saying directly. All, all A's are C's. All A's are C's. All A's are C's. What you just did is called hypothetical syllogism. You do it in unit six, called unit six, you see. If you're able to finish everything, if not, we'll do the first part and then continue the subsequent. You have come to the lecturer's office and you are giving information or you've gone to your boss or your boss has come to you. Either way, the communication is all the A's in the bag. It could be money. It could be the women. It could be what you can say. All the women in the room are married. And all the married people there are attending the trip. My woman is in the room there. You said that you, the protocol head, you have come to tell us that all the women in that room eh, are married. And all those who are married are part of the trip. They are not paying. They are going for free. Now I go and take my woman in the room and join the bus free and let her join. They say, well, but you have you as, as your woman. Ah, but you said all A's are B's. And then you added that and all the B's are also C's. Then it means all the A's are C's. It's hypothetical syllogism. That's how it should be, how it must be. Okay, so it is normative. You can't have it the other way around. If you do, we will critique you. We say it's invalid or better still, some other labels will be unsound. It's not cogent and stuff like that. Logical laws are normative. And then I mentioned mathematical laws earlier when we discussed. I buy two yards, two cups of rice. Mm. So you have gone to get your copy. Then your friend tells you, oh, we are now coming. We have our money with us. So you buy five for us also. When we come, they will invest you. One is 10 cities. So you buy the five in addition to your own one. Six, six copies. You give the person 60 copies, uh, 60 cities. When you come and you give the thing to your friends, the five of them collect the money. They know one is 10 cities. And they say, oh, but, but the total is 30 grams. There's trouble. You say, oh, but that is not how it should be. There are five of you. Each one of you has collected one, 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 one. You say, uh -huh. they say and one is 10 cities. This is the receipt. You say, yes, it's 10 cities. And so, one, two, three, four, five. You have to give me 50 cities. You say, no, it has to be 30 cities. You insist that, no, you can't have your own calculation of <laughs> 10 times 5. Please, it should be. You see the language because they are dealing with a principle a regulation, a law that is what normative mathematics. Maybe you can't even write that 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 equals 50. Maybe you can't write it. The, mac the macular woman may not even be able to write it, but she can understand it. I, I give you the example with a special student, a visually impaired man. It is the meanings they are dealing with over there. So the meaning of one plus one plus one. Is it equal to three, and it is not but negotiable. Mathematical laws, oh dear. Mathematical laws are there for what I say. Mathematical laws, oh dear. Mathematical laws are there for normative. And then the last one, which I already mentioned, but I want to touch on it again. See, divine laws. Look at the Sharia law. Is there? Look at the Ten Commandments. I when I'm ending this, I always tell students, you think that. Uh, the New Testament folks amongst you, and eh? those who believe that, oh, the new is, if you like, an, an upgraded version of the old. I believe that too. Because if there wasn't something wrong with the old, the new wouldn't have come. This is scripture. So there has to be a reason why the new covenant, the new will, the new, you know, grace has come. But grace is a law. 
It is a stricter law than the Ten Commandments. People say, oh, we are legalistic. No, ten, that shall not, that shall not. God doesn't want us. We are under grace. Remember, grace, the law of grace is love. It's stricter. It demands of you more. You can't do it by your own strength. Like you prefer the old one. I'm telling you. Because grace says, when they slap you on the left, turn the right. Like the way the brother last week, I think it was this group. When I'm me, I'm trying to give a strength to solve for people who are struggling. They say, it's time, it's time. You see, I was hot. I was so angry. I think it was this group, or maybe yesterday's group. I don't remember. But it was last week. Was it this group? Was so, this, this group. Yeah, this group. Grace is what is Yes. Go an extra That's the law of grace. There's a law there. So the divine laws, we talk Ten Commandments, we talk Sharia. Please, those of you, I know who I am. Charlie, your own is even as you don't pay just 10% title. No, you give all. That is our you give all. So 12 midnight, you are responding to student queries. No one will beat you for that. It's not part of your schedule. You can even ignore it. Because the work is too much. But you have been engaged. So you feel a sense of responsibility for the welfare of others. That's the law we are guided by. You can't do it by your own strength. You need the one that Jesus said, I can't tell you certain things. He has to come first because you can't bear it. He will help you with the helper, the advocate. So I'm, I'm using that to show you that. You see that when we're listing divine laws, we just listed the ones that we can easily point to, Ten Commandments, the Sharia law. This one is written on your heart. The law of grace is on your heart. So sometimes no one is demanding of you anything, but in your heart of heart, you know that you shouldn't have done that. A girl came to beg you for money. If you can't give her, let her go quiet. But you see, you stand there. Hey. Sometimes you yourself, after you finish, you go and you are guilty. You know that no one saw you as you were copying the, the question. Someone has asked you for your laptop so that she can present her work. Keep quiet and listen, please. Then you keep quiet. When she does the presentation, then you two go and pull that same paper and present. The girl doesn't think of you that way because she looks at the size of your tongues. She doesn't think you can do that. You alone know. Nobody knows that, but you know that it was wrong. Just like I would also know. So what? So that one too is a law divinely inscribed on our hearts. You don't see it. Maybe you don't do me. I don't go to church. This I don't wear this. I mean, so we say well, those people they are too legalistic. There is a higher law that is inscribed on our heart, even for those of us who believe that the new has come to bring us liberation. The benefit and the graciousness of that one is that you let it go, let go. So the more of him that is in you, the better you are able to obey that very important law of grace, which is love. And on that note, finito. Now I can take questions. Just in case our power goes off, I, don't, I hope it wouldn't. God will be merciful on us. Then you would have had the substantive content. The, the, the thing will save anyway when the lights go off. So I can take uh, questions. Put up your hand. Yeah, yeah, madam. Madam. Please put up your hand if you have questions. Hey, Brian. You see that you are coming to try me. I said I'm seeing this. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, sir. Go ahead, go ahead with your question. Oh, please go ahead, my brother. Ask your question. Don't worry. I'm muted. I scared the brother. Ask your question, eh? Was it Eugene? Okay, Eugene, ask your question. You are you are muted. Okay, madam, please. Can you say mathematical law and uh, moral? Can I say that mathematical laws have done what? And moral laws. Yes, they've done what? Are they, they are all normative. Laws? They are all normative. Okay. They are not the but same, but they are normative. <laughs> okay. So I, I want to know the differences in them. Oh, so mathematical laws are, are laws that guide how we look on your screen, how we calculate how we conceptualize them coming yeah 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 these are laws that regulate the way operations in mathematics ought to be done okay so if i say two plus three is not the same as square root of six two five if i say no. uh, uh -huh. so the laws that guide 
how we do mathematics, how we add, okay. how we subtract, how we divide numbers, what have you. Okay. Even number is not the same as prime number. The laws that yeah. ground an empty set is not the one that ground uh, you know, a subset or universal set. So these are all mathematical concepts. Then when we come to morality, moral codes, you shall not kill, you shall not do this. This is how, not how you should not talk back at your supervisor. It is wrong to do this. These are all prescriptive codes of what? Morality. It is not mathematical, but they are both normative. They are showing how things should be done or ought to be done. I hope that's okay. Sir. Yes. Thank you. All right. Welcome, sir. Let's take um oh Abigail do. Please ask your question. That was um Abby, ask your question. Whilst Abigail is asking her question, I'm willing to be on standby. Afterwards, very much. Abigail, ask your question, please. Possibly Abigail's own is not a question, so I'll lower her hand. Let's take uh, Samuel Inchi. Very much be on standby. Okay, Samuel Inchi may not have a question, so very much, please ask your question. Daniel, if we be on standby. Oh dear, very much. Was it to read? Daniel, for it. Uh, no, very much is asking his question. Go ahead. Very much, you are muted. Okay, let me take Daniel for it. Okay, Madam, please, I want to know the difference between um, the moral law and the cultural law. Moral goes beyond culture. Cultural laws are for those who share that culture. Finito. So our culture may prescribe that we 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 don't allow women to be chiefs, for example. I just want a very trivial example, okay? But the moral code may go be, be, may frown on that and say we can't do that. Or our culture may say if someone, my great grandfather, went to steal a cock or went to borrow money and didn't pay. His grandchildren should mm -hmm. go and serve the, the high priest. I don't want to mention anything, but I think that is something around what we call trocosy. That if I if I have a good understanding of it, I don't pretend to have done any research on that. Okay, but think of it that way. Someone went to went to steal or went to borrow money, didn't pay my great grandfather, and then I have to pay. I mean, <laughs> I know what thing. It could be how the culture regulate itself, okay? But it might not necessarily be right. So morality is talking about what is right and what is wrong. Why is it that someone is dead? And for us to go and bury that person, other people have to be fined money, plenty money in line up and be collecting from them. Why, why? You see, but maybe culturally acceptable. Why is it that a child is just born, a girl, and, and before she can even say Jack, she has been betrothed to be married to Atalutu, no, no, normally not at all. It's not, it's not normally a garden. I think it, it's a typical up there, you know. When the person is already betrothed to some grandpa, 70 something, and the girl is 30, to be the wife, culturally, okay. Is it right? No. So the moral code or the moral law that we have presented in this slide is capturing supposed universally acceptable, you know. Uh, ways of doing what is right, which transcends religion, culture, whatever. And I'm saying I would I would have preferred ethical than the word moral. Because moral connotes there's a certain connotation of moral that has makes it look like it is contextualized, you know, the context depending on religion or whatever. So that's the sense in which it has been used here, distinguished from what is culturally acceptable. I hope that helps. Okay, thank you very much. Welcome, Daniel. Let's take Clement now. After that, Doreen Jan, be on standby. Clement, quickly, pal, quickly, so that we take more of your questions. But I didn't start with question time. It's possible there will be questions over in people's mind. Okay, Doreen, Doreen Jan, your hand is up. And Axios, Clement's hand has gone down. Whilst Doreen is asking her question, Kelvin Aqua, be on standby. Hey, lady, Doreen, uh -huh. yes, I can hear you now. Go ahead. 
Remove the remove the uh, headpiece. If you are using ear earphone and head, remove it. We can't hear you. Madam, Madam, please, I can't talk without it. I can. I without it, you can't talk. Yes, please. Okay, then shout just a little bit more, okay, so we can hear you. Yes, please. Madam. Uh -huh. It's better now. Okay, please. I wanted to know. Um, since I wanted to know if empirical formulas could be changed and normatives are constant. Okay, so they are not formulas, they are generalizations. Every time the clouds gather, it rains. Whenever you throw a ball up, it will come, come down. Whenever prices of goods and services are increased, quantity demanded, these are all general claims and they are empirical in nature. The ones I've given, one is from economics, one is from uh, whatever, blah, 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 physics, whatever, and, and the meteorologists. So what? So these ones, because already we know that sometimes prices of goods and services are increased, people don't buy less, they rather buy more. Just to show you that they are the guy, you are nobody. Imagine the price of a certain, I don't know if it's Rolex watch or something, has shot up. And then you see Johnny Bravo, who is trying to pawn you, wearing it. Then you feel that, hey, Charlie, the guy, Charlie, the bill is dusted. So maybe it is his last money, but he has gathered all to go and buy it, contravening the law, making the law look like it is not effective. Because the price has shot up high. You expect people to buy less of it. Then before you open your eyes, people have come to buy more. It is possible, sometimes because the good is what, a necessary good or et cetera. So those laws can be adjusted. We change it sometimes or we refine it, we improve it. Economists will say, Ceteris paribus. You will have to hold other factors constant for the law to be effective. That's what we mean. It's not a formula. It is regulation, so we can refine it and change what we thought we knew. So that the pregnancy example I gave, we thought that women deliver in nine months, but now we know that there can be preterm babies, preterm. So you cannot say, ah, they married in February, they're giving birth in this, hey, these people, they, they. no, maybe the child came earlier than. So you are able to revise your thoughts and expectations because the law you were dealing with was what? An empirical law. That's what we have gone through. As for normative laws, they, like the examples you've given mathematics, you can't have your own version. It won't change for you. We tell you that this is how we do things here. If you can't do it, then don't come and marry in our home. So what is our custom? I give you that it's a customary right. If you don't want to conform to what we are saying, then leave Accra for the period that we are doing our traditional whatever. So the law will not change for you. That's the point I'm making. The law will be there. The exception will be forced to conform. Why? Because that is how things ought to be done. That's how you have to calculate. That's how you have to reflect or reason. That's how you have to behave as a civil society member. You can't wear swimsuit to the lecture hall. We may not call the police on you, but we'll use our eyebrows to tell you that here is lecture. If you want to wear bikini, go to the swimming pool or go to the beach. The beach, nobody is wearing kaba and slate swimming. Maybe they don't have a swimwear. We wouldn't laugh. The person may be the holiest person that you can think of. But if they, he or she wants to be an athlete, running 100 meters, she cannot wear kaba and slate socks. I, I hope you get all that. Uh -huh. So even the hijab, maybe she might have to put it down and run the 100 meters, showing part of the body. We wouldn't think of it as a illicit or immoral because of what she's doing. Our attention will not even be drawn to the parts that are being exposed because she's on the field running. And there, that's how she has to dress up. But if she takes that same thing to the church and she's the pastor's wife, to go and sit there preaching, we will say, ah, how can you dress like this? Because it is out of place. So we will use our eyebrows, our chuckling, and we will clap our hands on her to show her that she must conform. So normative laws will require all the types we mentioned. The only exception there is the scientific law, which has been called natural laws, that we describe as empirical. They include laws in political science, 
<coughs> sociology, sorry, religions, information studies, all oh, these are humanities and social studies and social, that's how we label the courses. They are typically describing what we observe. So you do research, gather research, botany, biology, what have you, we are all using our five senses to gather data, interpret it, connect it, and draw generalizations. Then the other discipline is to do deduction. So we are going to do unit six. Deduction will depend on the rules we have guided for ourselves. If you are doing law, we may be studying the prescribed ways of doing things. So it's corporate law, how you carry yourself in the corporate enterprise, taxation, what have you. Is it politics? We may have the politicians studying the laws of the land, studying, you know, military, what have you, all those ones, to know how we got to do things. That one is what, normative. If it's church, you may learn the descriptive part, but there is a part that you must know how it has to be done. If it is chief tenancy, you may know the information bit, gathering data, the factual part, which generates or empirical laws. But you must also know what is prescribed. That one is how you should do it, not what you, you think is done, but what you should do. So that, that's the difference that we are emphasizing for unit five. What is normative and what is descriptive? And I think that should help, Doreen. I hope it's fine, Doreen. Yes, yes, madam, please, that's fine. Thank you. Let's take Kelvin Aquana. Um, Pastor Madam, Kelvin is at it. Marian, be on standby. Yes, sir. Um, please, I just wanted to add that um, that is strictly mean that um, the normative when the normative um, principle when breach has a consequence, whilst the empiric, empirical one doesn't have any consequences attached to it. Both of them have consequences, but one is when we say consequences, you mean punishment? Is that what you mean? Yes, yes, please. Yes, yes. Then then the normative has punishment of different variations, of, of course. I've told you that the moral ones, sometimes we can use our eyebrows to say, hey, so this is how they treat women here. Hmm. Just to express disapproval. And it can make you uncomfortable to correct you. If it's a civil matter, we can give you a fine. I mean, traffic offenses in the, in the world over. They, they fine you or they take the money out of your account even before it comes. If it is a criminal issue, you can be taken out of your home and go and stay in some four square place next to your, excuse my language, pool. Because you can't go open your mouth and say anything. So we will let you conform. If it is a treasonable matter, you might not even say, hey, what's your name? Be an hour, be an <laughs> Who come and pick you before morning? Because we can't let you do that. If you went <coughs> raping your own daughter, those examples I gave you, you say, oh, but this one, man, yeah, I've, I've, I've read chicken, I've eaten one. No, it is the state versus a uh, You can't say it's your, your child. It's not the child versus you, it's the state. So we we'll let you conform in a certain, at a certain uh, uh, degree of conformity. I'm giving all those examples to help other people who may have the same question. So in each of these instances, we're dealing with normative law. One was criminal, one was civil, one was moral. The examples I just gave, uh, the other one was what, uh, mathematical. So they are all normative, but you see how we, the consequences you refer to, how we enforce it will vary. You don't do that with the empirical. You are going to enforce your law that you have discovered about the world. I the one who created it. What if your discovery is sick or is incomplete? You go and revise your law. So if you thought that every metal expands when heated, it is just an expectation you have that if you discover a metal again, it will also expand when heated. That you may discover a metal that will not expand when heated. And we have already done that. So if you have an expectation and it fails, you, are, you, you rather look out for what are, you have discovered, which is new, and go and improve, supposedly. Karpopa says the falsification leads towards an improvement of knowledge in science. Now I'm doing philosophy of science. Those of you that do science, we come and do some of our philosophies with you. That's what you are studying there. That is progress. So you thought that, oh, so far as the heart stopped beating, a human being will die as soon as their heart stopped beating. If it just turns out, by some further research and investigation, factual observation, we realize that someone's heart stopped beating 
three minutes, five minutes. But when we use the CPR machine to touch her, boom, the thing was like electricity, it went through her and the heart came back. Are we not better off? We have nullified what we thought we knew, but now we have a better way of dealing with an empirical world that we didn't create in the anomaly and of we didn't create the world. The world was created. We have to have that humility as empirical scientists when we are studying something that has been put there and all we are able to do is to open one at a time and discover something, find out that not knowing the, the whatever, earthquake lines, some parts here, hey, we didn't know. Then all oh, this, tomorrow too, we may discover something that when you hear earthquake, blah, 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 maybe you should just open your arms apart and the thing will stop. How will we know? We won't know until we keep searching. And we won't keep searching if we have a sense of, I have arrived, then we won't search. So the point then is when it is an empirical generalization that we have made, it has the potential of being possibly false. Why? Because we are still searching till Christ comes, if you believe it. Okay, so that is the elaboration I want to give a uh, big boss. I hope that helps, Kelvin. Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Thank Excellent. you. Madam. Thank you too. Let's take Ernestina then. While Celestina is at it, is that someone to be on standby? You, you are welcome. Say, so let me take Michelle. And whilst Celestina is on, we take Michelle. Uh, Michelle, Lisa should be on standby. Go ahead, Celestina. Uh, Madam. Yes, Andy. Madam, please. Um, I want, I want to ask how many laws are there because my network there can be... was. Oh, my don't worry. There's no network. So I didn't join earlier. And and the, the slides don't get affected by network. They are there. Okay. That's why oh. I say this. Listen, oh, Auntie, Auntie, I don't want you to be worked up. Listen, the slides are there. Okay. You don't see them okay. at the. Do you don't see them at the resource too? I eh. saved only one. I saw it. Hey, this is my name. Madam, look at me. <laughs> eh, I'm coming, boss. I'm coming. All the slides are there. Madam, when you, eh, when you do that to ladies, eh, they they are unable to talk. Uh, uh, not all ladies, Madam. Do, but but. And uh, Brian, I'm proud of you. I say wait. My sister Ernestina, see, I'm resharing something. Look on my screen, pa. If you are faced with this, I'm going to my Sakai to show you. Eh? Because that one is important. I'm going to upload the unit six right after today's session. I can breathe a little today. So after this, I will put it there. You have to have access to the source. I don't like mediators. Like my father, wow. no mediation. Mm -hmm. Because mediator there, the day is not in a good mood. I won't post anything for you. If you know the source, you go there yourself. Okay. So this is my sakai, which is just like it. Mm -hmm. See, when you go, you will see what I've highlighted. UGS 151 in campus. Please, sister, go to the resource too. This is it. See, what I'm seeing is what you will see. Let me view as a student so that you see it. The way you will see it. It is there. So that you don't get my network data. That one is a bad workman quarreling with quarreling with her tools. I don't like it. See. Wow. Authorized WhatsApp link, and when you, when you click this, the document that will come give you all the properly sanctioned WhatsApp platforms. If you go and stay on someone's platform where he or she has made himself or herself a tutor or a lecturer and is giving information that is not correct, you can't hold me accountable. Normally, we wouldn't have created WhatsApp platforms because it becomes too much work, but students find it useful, sometimes timely. So we have given you authorized one. The people, the, the, the people manning them are two, uh, excuse me, TAs, teaching assistants of the course, authorized. Not people who say they know it. Then they will tell you, hey, if you go open that thing again, the question will change. Then you send me 100 uh, emails asking, Doc, would the question change? When I have gone through the pain of giving you a notice, clearly telling you, go there. To test them quizzes. Someone said, Doc, please, the assignment is not there. I've gone to assignment two, sir. It's not there. It's my work. <laughs> I've sent you an announcement telling you the assessment is at, at test and quizzes two. I said, I want you to look at it. I brought you here for you to see. I said, Go to test and quizzes two. I've given you two attempts. Use the first one because some may not be able to type, some may have network issues. You have to reflect on the question a little. You will know the word count. The persons examining you by the grace of God are critical minds. God have, has helped them so far. You think doctor is a joke? 
Don't mind me. That time is not a joke. Auntie, who level 100 is a brown brain. Level 100 is, I was in level 123 or so years ago. And if people are committed to something, they go to that extent to help students. And students will go and sit on a plan. The person confuses 200 people, whoever it was. And you are saying, hey, the question will change. So me, I'm typing, then your network is gone. How can that be the examination? Please, can you open the thing for just five minutes so that for the number you have called cannot be reached at this moment? You won't get me to open five minutes for you to submit. You didn't listen. So me, that's what I'm taking you here. This is the authorized WhatsApp platform. The links are all there per group. Someone may want to be on all the groups. Me, I don't restrict you. Because university training is search and research. If people have the desire to search, you can't resist it by some unnecessary, you have to be here, can't be here. No, I don't do that. So far as you're doing the proper thing, it's fine. Go to group seven, group thousand, group 38, get information and learn. So I'm, I don't restrict, all the groups are here. The online meeting links are here. I sat even yesterday morning, people were asking, I can't get into the group. The, the meeting, I didn't receive a link. I said, hey, sir, you think we are coming to do that about here? Go to the place and get the link, it's there. If you're waiting for someone to bring it, the person may not bring it. So the document is there. It hasn't changed. It's there. That is it. All the groups. Maybe today you don't want to go Wednesday or you are doing your morning uh, fasting or something. So you didn't want to be distracted. So you couldn't do this morning. The Thursday one to is there. The links are Teams links. So you can attend. This course, if you don't get a, and then a wala wala. Because we didn't stress you at all. Then, Ante, recorded live sessions. Like the one I'm having with you that is being recorded. I record them. I could have just sent it to only my groups, but maybe some other group person to benefit. So I've told all my colleagues, I'm coordinating. Please, if you do your recordings and you want it to go out there, give them to me. I compile or and create a document labeled. So a student may say, Oh, I want to see what uh, Dr. Miles's group, Dr. Nancy Miles's group discussed on the topic. Or oh, I had a uh, Dr. Morgan, but I want to see what Mr. Okansi too said. It, it doesn't have to be anything. This is academia. It, it should be accessible. Well, so it's there. People ask you the links, the links. If you're on my academic channel, they want to upload my, we get it immediately. Well, this life in Unit 6, some of you are struggling to open it. I even think I'm also struggling. It's PowerPoint. It was from another colleague, so I may edit it. We are finished. I may edit it and put in my own slides there uh, for everyone to benefit like we are doing, okay? So that one is not a problem, but the others are there. That is for next week. The others are there, I'm taking tutorial links, tutorials. Everybody should go and engage tutors. Tutorial means your T is they are closer to being a student than the lecturers, you see? I said 23 years ago, there are pertinent student issues that TAs are easily able to associate with because they are recent students. That's why tutorials is there's a three credit hour course. So you do two hours lecture time, one hour tutorial, questions and answers. Hey, T, please, oh, this connotation thing, can you give me some examples? That's what tutorial is for. All the several tutorial links are there. People, people will say, please, doc, can you give me an example? I say, hey, what did your TA say? When you send me such email that actually that when they say, oh, the T is when you send them, I said, the T is when you send them, have you seen the tutorial? Like, <laughs> go to the resource, I'm helping you. Lecture one, Sister Adwa, that's lecture one. Lecture two, Raya, lecture three, me. What we are discussing, you saw me go and pull it out. When the light out made my slide disappear, I went back to pull it from here. That's lecture four, the one we have just done. This is the course outline for the semester, which is also posted. Ante, any questions? No questions. You have the all the laws there on the slides. I'll take two more. Let me take Michelle Lisa. Thank now. you, madam. I'm most welcome, my dear. Lisa, ask your question quickly, Michelle Lisa. I'll take a, uh, okay, we, are, we have six. More. We are done. Substantive content is done. I don't want a, a, a pension. It's time, it's time. I don't want to hear that, I beg you. Because me now, did you hear my husband leave? I couldn't even say bye bye with him. Because I said, you know, uh, Madam, the question I want to ask is not on um, today's lecture. Can I still ask? Ask, ask. Don't, don't worry. You ask it. Let me see. Okay. Um, around the past um, 
uh, emotive expression. Mm-hmm. And I was going through the slides when I saw rhetorical polemics and that discourse. So I wanted to ask if they are all the same thing. Rhetorical things. polemics are types of discourse. Discourses are a passage, passages, not just one expression. So you have okay. to engage that. Uh, if it's a passage, a collection of passage that vent out strong emotions, we'll call it a rhetorical polemic. You see that? But if, it is, uh, but if it is a, 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 a passage, a collection of expressions put together into a passage telling you how something happened, that is that would be what? A narration. Okay. How okay. it happened, Thank a reporting. Uh-huh. Then Thank if you. it is telling you how it should be done, you see instruction. Then the one okay. that gives you reasons why you should accept or reject another claim, we call it an argument. This is lecture three. Okay, right. thank you, Mom. Welcome, my sister. I will take two more and then, by my own discretion, uh, let me take the two more questions. Okay, quickly. Who should I call? At two minutes. Madam. Whose, whose question is really pressing? Like the thing Madam me. You, uh, ask it, my friend, who said Madam me? Madam, please. please um, I, I wanted to ask, uh, like, what is like? It's not about today's lesson, so but I wanted hey, to know so that I know, ask, ask, oh, ask. so that I know how I schedule my ask, stuff. Ask I wanted person, to ask, ask the the day for the I like is the it's, it's on the course or something. It's on the course outline. It will be in, oh, okay. in a certain week, uh, but the university has confirmed because of your numbers, and you will use the. Uh, the what's the name the lab so there has to be available space so normally it is in the eighth week this is the fifth week the topics to cover probably are not done yet and it's oftentimes the weekend but we'll get notice from uh, the folks so that's what all that i'm saying is on your course outline okay all right thank you you are welcome of course uh, there was a hand up. I was going to call my friend. I think it's Tiago or something. You have just put down your hand. Are you sorted? I hope you are. If you are, then it's fine. Let's take JK now. JK, Vincent, Dama, and Mohammed. Then I will, I will show you your assignment questions. JK. JK, quickly, okay, quickly, quickly. Go ahead. Okay. The number of the month. The number of what? Sorry. Oh, my brother, you are soft spoken and it's fine, but I can't hear you. Could you shout just? Hello, a yeah, it's better. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to ask about the um polygamy. The number of five what? a month can take. Yes, please. Polygamy. Mm-hmm. What are you asking about uh, it? Um, moral law. Can it can it both under moral law and custom law? I'll have to know what the law is that I can know where to place it. For instance, so if if I get you are saying like if I say uh, uh, a man should not have more than one wife. Okay, it could be cultural. It could be religious. Take note, especially the, the cultures that are guided by a religious belief. Like, I don't I don't know how much I can speak to that, but like, like if it's an Arab nation, you know that it, it, will, it will likely be Islamic uh, to, the, to a large extent, okay? So you may not easily be able to distinguish what is cultural from what is religious. Uh-huh. But it could, it could, I may not be a, a be in Islam, may even be a Christian and believe in polygamy. There are some Christian versions of that. Ah, right? Solomon had 300 wives and 700 concubines. The wisest man in the world, according to the Bible, human wisdom, that is, because there is one that is greater than Solomon, who is the epitome of wisdom proper, that is Christ. But if you are looking at human wisdom, says scripture, I'm quoting scripture, then Solomon was the wise, he had 300 wives, so, bra, 700 concubines, Charlie. How will he even see his first <laughs> second book when they are passing? <laughs> Confusion. You see, but he, he is a why. Please, so I said I finished with the content proper. These are people's queries. It is my time. 
you can log out. Don't tell me it's time because I'll get worked up. The brother's question is bothering him. If he sends me an email, I will answer. If he's sitting here and he asks and I can address it, I'm glad to address it to the benefit of others because we are not hiding anything. It doesn't mean you should be sitting and someone may say, well, I'm, I'm interested, it's being recorded. I'll pull it and share the link. I'm not obliged to. So there is no reason why if you want to listen to our or concern that we are having, then you come and worry me with it, please. <laughs> Boss. So just to say that, even as Christians, those who say they are Christians, like myself and others, within it, there can be versions. Remember the uh, substantive disagreement. There can be versions of it that say, we can have others. Abraham got his house help impregnated by the direction of the wife. Jacob had legally married wives, those that he had to get fed, and house girls, all in the queue that have formed the 12 tribes. So I'm just saying that it could be a cultural issue. It could be an, a religious one. And it could also be a moral one. That is why I am not giving a straightforward answer that when you are making regular a, a claim of a, a, a statement on polygamy, it necessarily is moral. It's a moral matter or necessarily a cultural matter or necessarily a religious. It can even be a statutory one if the, if the nation is heavily influenced by its, you know, uh, religion, like I gave the Arabian thing. I don't know if that helps, JK. Okay, madam. Okay. Thanks very much. Now we can take, you are welcome, sir. Let's take Gamma, then Vincent. Hello, brother. Yes, sir. Go ahead, quickly. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, last question. You mentioned something about divine law. Uh, yes. Uh, I didn't know that I saw, but with my own we have done it today. With the we have done it today too, sir. Did you hear it? Okay. Oh no no! If you didn't hear, then, the then don't worry. The recording is as you get it. Now ask your question. Okay. And then please, with the moral law, you mentioned yes. something like cultural and moral and religious. Yes. Are they all the you, same? The so same did you just join us? Don't feel offended when I ask that. Like, okay. did you just join? Were you with us throughout? Oh, please. Uh huh. So that is okay. where the issue is. And so don't worry. Don't worry. The recording will answer everything you've asked. Computer journal, all the things you've asked. Does that help? You don't have to play okay. the whole thing. When you get it, just you can forward it to where you are interested in and play it 100 times. But in class, you can't ask me to say the same thing 100 times. Okay, so I'll pull it right after the session. And then you can find, go touch on all that. If it's culture, it may not, it may not necessarily be religious. And if it's religious, it may not necessarily be the moral. Something can be religiously accepted. Like I told you, the religion could be, you know, a traditional one that says, you know, uh, kill some, you know, orphans or something. What is the name? I don't want to use a very controversial one. Like footballers are going to they say, if you go to so-and-so, they will ask for a certain kind of human beings. And when they sacrifice them, Charlie will score in no time. That's their faith. But is it right? So perhaps religiously acceptable. But culturally, not. Or legally, as if so I've dealt with all of that, uh, Salasi. Okay, Tama. I'll take this end now. Oh, please look at the slides here. Because as for the word law, there can be thousand senses of it. I don't know why you're looking for the number of laws we have. In the textbook, there are six of them. One is a subset of the other. But there can be a thousand and one uses for the word law. Okay. The slides have it. That's what Madam as and I showed her is in the slides. And she says she doesn't see the slide. And I went to show you it's there at the resource to lecture for. Okay. Listen, go ahead. Okay, Madam. Can my qu yes. mm. questions have been answered. Excellent. Those questions. Excellent. Yeah. But yeah. Then I've done well, Charlie. I'm in the spirit. Mohammed, sir, please ask your question. Then we can take. Oh, Mohammed's question is also answered. Hey, there's Mohammed and then uh, uh, Mohammed. As Empire Eric, you will be the very last one. Mohammed. If your background is noisy, let me take as Empire Eric, okay? Then you send me a message. Please, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Go ahead. 
Um, and the natural law, they said the natural law statement have no expectation. But in its explanation, you it is law like means that. Just a minute. If it is law like, then just like the normal understanding of law that we see with the normative ones, the expectation is that empirical laws to must be obeyed. That's the, you expect that every metal will expand when he takes. But let me take you to that slide again. But it can be, you are not certain that every meta will do what? Will expand when heated. That is why, where is it? That is why, so can you see, I'm projecting to that slide. Can you see that I'm projecting a slide now? Yes. I want to take, this is what you are referencing. Okay. This is what you are saying. Natural law statements have no exceptions. Why? and are therefore called law-like. What does that mean? That is my, my job. I came to help you understand that. It means yes. they are supposed to be thought of like how you would think of a regular law. That's why we say they are like laws. They are law-like. What does the law say? The law is no respecter of persons. It applies to everyone. You must all subscribe to it. You can't say that it is the law, but me, I'm an exception. No. But then, look at the next line. But, there comes the but. As soon as you hear but, oh dear. As soon as you hear but, we are trying to establish what? A contrast. Mohammed, keep your thing muted. It's your background. When I finish, they ask any follow up that you may have. Look, but there is no way to be absolutely certain. You see that they are highlighted and boldened. Don't get yourselves confused. The thing is like any law, just like a normative one. Anytime you throw a ball up, it will come down. Whenever prices and goods and services are increased, quantities demanded for, whenever the clouds gather, it rains. These are all like laws. The expectation is that if the cl clouds have gathered, then it must rain. But my brother, the clouds can gather and it will not rain. And you can't arrest the sky. You can't do anything. If you're a meteorologist, you go home embarrassed. And it is not your fault. What you have observed so far in the past, which makes you think that now that the class have gathered here to it much rain, you observed all of them, but you didn't create the world. So it can change. If God plays six miludu <laughs> and it turns loss, he will say, Oh, today could have changed my mind. Everything prevailed. Yeah, you know how many people, how many times people have gotten busy at night and they are not getting pregnant? You think it's a joke? Everything that people do to get pregnant, they have done it. They take it like paracetamol two, three times a day. Still, sister. Yes. And I say it with a lot of solemnity. Another person too has thrown away all the children in her womb, maybe eight of them for abortion. She gets married two, two months, she's pregnant. So don't let us go into that. I can do philosophy of that. It's, it's Hume, David Hume, causation. It's in your text, just a, a subset of it. To roll back, the laws that we observe empirically, this is the point the, the instructor is making, and there's no contra tra contradiction at all. <clears throat> it tells you empirical laws are also supposed to have no exceptions. They are law-like. Law I'm going to say, Mara, they are like laws. So then they should not have exceptions like deviations but there comes the bad but there is no way to be absolutely certain that such statement will always be true you can't be certain because you're not discovering so what so they are called law like because maybe someday counter evidence will make them false they are falsified if you go and it didn't rain like the way you expected it to rain based on the factual observations you've made, it didn't rain. Are you going to erase the sky? You will go and change whatever you thought you knew, like the metal one. You thought all metals expand when it is. Now you see all metals expand when it is, except so and so and so, except maybe those that are discovered. All birds fly, except so and so bird that was discovered so and so time. You will say every human being breathes oxygen, except so and so human beings that we find in so and so places that now they, they, they breathe in carbon dioxide and they die three days after they are born. Have you discovered it, Mr. It is a potential possibility. That's the point. And I think our friend is well. Okay, now let me go and check if he is. Mohammed, is it okay? 
Yes, yes, yes. Very good. I see one last hand up, Stacy Napoleon. I wouldn't have taken it, but it's a lady, I suppose. So, Madam, what's your question, please? You are muted. Stacy, you are muted, please. Okay, maybe it's an error. So you can send me that question directly. I wanted to walk you through some of the practical, the questions we asked you in your assignment one, but there is no time now, I'm very tired. So hopefully, when we meet God within next week, we can glance at them. My other colleagues, I shared with my other colleagues too, if they have Madam, time, they can share it to colleagues and show them. Go ahead, Stacey, um, we have to go. Madam, yeah. mm. uh, Madam, please, it's not based on what you thought today. Ask the question because it's bothering you. Ask the yeah, question, not based Stacey. On what you thought today. Hey, I said ask yeah, it, okay. but it's something that is worrying you, so ask. Madam, please, um, I wanted to send you um, um, the answer. You are not asking a question, um, no. to... Auntie. You are not asking a question. Ask a question. Don't tell me information. Okay, ask. Please, is this so and so and so? Are there so? Where is this? Is, is that this? Should this? this uh, ask. If it's not a question, then we can talk about it later. Is it okay? Yes, please. All right. Thank you all very much. Have a wonderful week ahead. All the best and take care. Look out for assignment two. You know how to all the best. And Thank take you, care. madam. Thank you, my brother. Thank you so much. I'm trying to pull out the recording quickly. Then yeah. I log Love out. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.